been on a terrific day for the averages. Some stocks rallied a lot harder than others. Just look at the cybersecurity cohort. These names have rebounded dramatically since their lows last month, and today they got another boost when we learned that Chinese hackers were behind the Marriott data breach, the one that exposed the personal information of about 500 million people. Apparently, this breach was part of a broader campaign by China's Ministry of State Security, their communist equivalent of the CIA. Now, when it comes to the trade talks, this news throws yet another confounding variable into the mix. But if you're running a business, the takeaway is crystal clear. If your company wants to avoid an incident like the one that Marriott disclosed last month, you need to spend more on cybersecurity. It's one thing to protect your data against some disheveled hacker operating out of his mother's basement. It's another thing to go up against the People's Republic of China. That's why the whole group outperformed today, including FireEye, the purveyor of cybersecurity software that also has the best forensics division in the industry, meaning businesses bring them in to investigate after they get hacked. We know FireEye is doing well because they reported a strong quarter at the end of October, and we just spoke to the CEO on our Veterans Day show. But after these latest revelations about China, i got to dig deeper. So let's check in with Kevin Mandia. He's the CEO of FireEye to learn more about state-sponsored cyber threats and how his company deals with them. Mr. Mandia, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you, sir. Good to see you, Kevin. Good Have a seat. It. Thank you. All right, Kevin, I'm confused. We, uh, we uh, learned today that the Chinese perhaps are going to soften their uh, world dominance 2025 plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we hear that the president might uh, intervene positively for the uh, CFO of Huawei. Mm -hmm. But I pick up the New York Times, and I read that the person who hacked my wife's mm -hmm. data in Starwood was communist Chinese. How is this possible? Well, I think what you're witnessing, Jim, is... We're still tr trying to figure out the rules of engagement in cyberspace. You know, you go back to 2014, you had the Sony Pictures breach. First time in my career, you see a nation deleting data at a private company. 2015, you see Russia change the rules of engagement. 2016, you see an election where documents are leaked by hackers from another nation. 2017, you see Iran get out out in front doing more intrusions than ever before on U.S. soil. In 2018, we're all figuring out where's the boundaries. Where does it end? How do we have rules? Well, you are, and I love how you put it in your notes, not just an appliance company, as you right. know, it's where you're a software company. Right. If you were to go into any of these companies mm -hmm. ahead of time right. and say, look, here's what bad actors are doing, here's what you expect, right. you need to know instantly, would any of things have been stopped? You know, it, you always want to say that you right. could stop them, but the reality is this is a nation with mil you know, billions of people. Right. I liken it to this. It's a hockey analogy. It's like going up against Wayne Gretzky on a penalty shot. You know, if they get 10 shots on goal, Wayne Gretzky is going to put the puck in the net. We're talking about a nation picking on hospitality. That's not a fair fight. Would we detect these attacks? Yes. We're pretty well honed in. That's what we do for a living. We respond when these types of groups are successful in their intrusions, so we know their fingerprints. But you can't really expect every company to withstand a cyber military attack. That's probably not the bar you want to set as a nation. But what do we do with red teaming? Right. Well, I think it's important. I think red teaming, that's a CEO's opportunity to figure out unvarnished truth how good their security is. Explain that to people because yeah, I so, think it's terrific theory. Yeah, what a red team is, is it's not just hiring people from outside your network to break in, but break into the corporate network and do something of impact and consequence. Get customer data. Get the CEO's email get to an industrial control system, perhaps influence it. Your CISO or Chief Information Security Officer is always going to brief the CEO with, here's, you know, we're in the green on this thing, but we're in the red on this thing. And as a CEO, when you see things in the red, you go, I have to do something about that. When you see things in the yellow based on judgment by your CISO, right. you're like, well, how do I feel about that? And when you see things in green, you wonder, are we really in the green? The only way to get truth about how good your security is is with red teams. Now, in, in your uh, most recent discussion at Barclays, you're very interesting to talk about how you've got uh, people, 120 individuals that work outside of our breaches, right. outside of the red team. They speak 32 languages. There are 19 countries. Absolutely. This is your team. Yes, it is. Yeah, we, we want to know, first, we learn a lot front, you know, on the front lines responding to all these breaches, figuring out what happened, what to do about it. We want to know more than that. We want to know who's doing it. Ultimately, attribution does matter. Okay. Otherwise, there's no risk or repercussions. There's no deterrence in cyberspace if we don't know who's doing it. Well, can you go to the government after you find one of these and say uh, to, I don't know, Homeland Security or maybe you, you go to... Defense Department say, listen, you got to understand, these guys are doing this to us. They could be doing it to you. Well, we have a strong partnership with our government. You we do. have a strong partnership with over 60 governments, uh, both on the intelligence side as well as on the forensic side. But uh, ultimately, we're in the business of protecting our customers from the exact threats that are successful 
if, if you're not prepared ahead of time. Okay, you use the term unvarnished truth, almost right. as if there are companies that don't want to hear it. Well, how else do you know truth and security? You can have people go around. It, it, a lot of places, it's a compliance drill. If you're okay. regulated, you want to have that nice pie chart for regulators, yeah. and you want to say, we have this control, these people assigned to that control, we're in the green. But a lot of products, what I've learned over the years, not every product does what you think it does, and a lot of times you get hit by both sides. The product doesn't defend you from everything they claim it does stop. And on the other side, you might be only using 40% of the capability of the product. There's so much user error and mistakes. A lot of these pie charts are just an assessment, a subjective right. assessment that we're doing okay. Okay, so let's say I have a database that has 500 right. million names. Right. Uh, and that is the treasure of what I have. Right. And I know that my business is going to take a hit if those names come out. Can I employ you, five other firms, and just make sure that that never gets into the hands of the Chinese? Well, you do the best you can, but again, I think there are people probably in uniform badging into a building that ultimately did this breach. <laughs> Realize this, you gotta look at how people do business. A lot of times, that information has to be shared to dozens of other companies. So, there's, so it's accessible in many different ways to many different customers. So outside looking in, a lot of people may have the response, I can't believe they lost this information. Right. Don't forget, there are professionals on the other side, and the asymmetry is you're not going to pitch a perfect game in security every day. You're just not. And, and you're up against some of the best hackers in the world. Okay, but uh, has it stepped up? I mean, here we are yeah. trying to have a good relationship yes. with China, but we're being tough. Right. And they're just, they're just piling on, huh? Well, I think... There have been real changes ever since there's been an agreement between the United States and China that was signed, I believe, in September of 2015. But people say they're going back on that, Kevin. People do say that. It comes down to what is fair game for espionage, you know? And there's a fine line between hacking for security and hacking for economic reasons, because right. those would argue a strong economy is security. So uh, I think there's always going to be aggression in cyberspace. I think globally right now, Nobody wants it to dial up another notch, but what I've seen over the last three years is the rules of engagement have broken. I'm not sure what's going to happen next for many nations with a modern capability. All right, so are you being brought in as part of a suite of products? I mean, I know uh, Chuck Robbins, Cisco, he's got kind right. of an end-to-end -end solution, mm -hmm. but a lot of companies just have a little piece of it. Are you right. par a part of that, or are you just kind of... Listen, if you want us, yeah. we do it alone. Well, we can do it alone, but we like to do it with a lot of other players as well. So I don't think any one company will ever own incident detection. There's always going to be a human that could detect an issue. Uh, and realize my frame of reference is responding to over 600 breaches every year. So we see the kill shots that you know go through the vest, as they say. We have six ways into a customer. We have services, we have intelligence, we have network security, endpoint security, email security, and then the brains, you know, a right. box that's like adding a thousand people to your security program. All right, now we're so. well past this notion that it's right. a nuisance, right? I right. mean, I know uh, we got hacked this week on, uh, hmm. press the wrong button on Apple, okay? Right. It was almost impossible to clean things up. What right. do you do if you know you've been? Uh, you know, I did a radio show once, and somebody called in from Regina, Saskatchewan, I think it was, and said, hey, same question. I hate to say it, I wrote a 500-page book on what you do. If your machine's compromised, it depends on how. Cleaning it up, if you're not a professional, I hate to say it, it's, uh, you need a brain surgeon to do brain surgery. Um, you'll you'll want to call somebody to clean it up for you. Um, I, I, do you think that the lines are now beginning to blur between corporate and military? I do yeah, feel I do. that the military is working on behalf of Chinese corporations. You know, it's been explained to me, I don't have firsthand experience, but it's been explained to me that the Chinese don't believe our government and our private sector is truly separate, right. but it actually is. And when I heard it explained that way, I sort of got it, that their economy really isn't separate from their government right. in many ways. Right. That difference is just the cultural divide that uh, we got to learn to live with. Man, they got the edge on us in some ways. Mm -hmm. They do. Well, we got you. Yeah. We got your guys. Yeah. I like it. You got the red team. You got it. But, uh, you know, we saw legislation people are working for. The bottom line is what I have observed. U.S. government is holding nations accountable. They're doing it with publicly facing indictments against North Koreans. Right. Uh, the Dutch came out and they did it with the, United, with the U.K. on Chinese hackers a couple months ago. Sooner or later, if you really want to be part of the global economy, you're going to have to play by the rules that the other nations want you to play by. Well, in the meantime, we got to have fire. We got to have fire. That's Kevin Manu, CEO of FireEye. He's done remarkable work, all in the documents, about how this company has transitioned from being an appliance company that comes in after to being a company that offers a terrific suite of software that can really help. Mad Money's back after the break. Thank you. 
Uh, Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.